Welcome to another episode of Talking with WIT, Kevin and Son, where we showcase people you should know. This episode is brought to you by RMK Productions and the 10 United Podcast Network. Through the power of story, our mission is to uplift the power of your voice, inspire, share stories and experience and perspective using the framework of teaching, learning, and modeling. Our purpose is very simple. We create hope, helping other people every single day. Now, the truth of it is, um, this is a woman's world. Whatever your objective is, successful people create a framework around their day-to-day -day lives that um, sometimes enhances their lives and sometimes they pour into others. This podcast will reveal the secrets of a highly effective life of a friend of mine. Today's guest will share through her entrepreneurial story, simple and doable steps of how she turned bad habits into good habits, mastered small behaviors that led to big outcomes. Our guest will also share with us how she discovered how to do that thing or do the thing. She also has created a community that helps people overcome limitations and have people achieve um, their goals. And if you stay with us long enough, maybe our guest will share with you, you know, the book that she's working on, how she supports a thriving and mentoring coaching business, which um, she's going to correct me on that sometime later on, and how she creates a time and space to do that one thing podcast. Ladies and gentlemen, I want to welcome my good friend, Serial entrepreneur, soon to be author, soon to be a TEDx speaker, and the Do the Thing uh, podcast host, Miss Stacy Lauren. How you doing? Hello, Kevin. How are you? I'm doing fine. My my intro is not as fancy as yours. I used to use a pre-recorded um, podcast thing, and yours sounds so good. Got a little nervous, you know. Most people will say, huh, "Why why are you interviewing another podcaster? We're supposed to be like competition." I said, not in my neighborhood. My friends, we help each other. We we share our audience and we grow together. So um, how's everything out there on the West Coast? Yeah, it's great. And I think that's why we're so aligned, right? It's understanding that idea of collaboration. And the more you're able to connect together, the more you're able to do, uh, you know, for you and for the world. Yeah, you you have a um, a wonderful following. And I want to say publicly, thank you. Uh, for allowing me to be on your show, um, you know, I I don't know if uh, how good I uh, I was or whatever the case may be, but you know, you are stellar. But as you know, you know, on this show, I have Sunday motivationals with Kevin and friends, and I am dying to have your input. And I'm big on quotes, so as we tell our story, I'm going to throw some of these quotes in there and see what your take is on those stories and how they connect. So. Um, with you being a thought leader, an inspiration for women that are overcoming um, their am ambitious or their limitations and trying to achieve some things, I want you to share with you, share with our viewers, your life experience. And I want to tie this quote in with the story that you're about to tell. Mm. So here's the quote. Sometimes you have to stand up and carry your own star because there will be others that won't carry it for you. Now, Stacy, do the thing. <laughs> wow, that's a great quote. Yeah, it's true, right? Because there's so many people that uh, when they're doing that big, scary goal, you know, they're or have the big star, they're thinking that uh, all the people that are in their life, their support network, their friends and their family and the people that they know are going to want to support that star, <laughs> you know, that vision. And right. uh, with a lot of people don't realize is, uh, you know, a lot of times you have big dreams, you have big goals, but if someone hasn't done that goal and they don't share that goal and it's never something that they've even thought of doing, they're going to think you're crazy. And they're going to say, why do you want to do that? You know, and they're not going to understand. And so it's important for you to uh, know that. Uh, and a lot of people will let that stop them and think that it's not the right thing for them. But uh, what really is important is that you are the one that's guiding that star. And then you find a group of people that is wanting to do it too, because then you get the connectedness and the uh, belief in yourself that you can do it because you're seeing other people doing it too. And that's part of the reason that you, you are here today, because you are such an amazing 
person. You are a selfless person. And, and I know you You are constantly pouring into others and bring and elevating people and bringing them up. And um, believe it or not, you're carrying a lot more stars than um, you, you'll ever, ever know. I mean, you're even holding up one of mine and uh, you're much appreciated. Um, where did Stacy Lauren begin? What's the story before you became that um, do the thing person? Yeah. Um, it's interesting. It's like, it's, oh, you mentioned in the beginning that um, the future TEDx talk, right? And so in writing a book and so through like podcasts and doing all these things, that's the other thing that's kind of cool about this for you guys listening is sometimes you could just decide that you want to do something and not in your mind, not know if you're going to actually finish it because just by you like saying you want to do it, you're able to uh, reflect so much and get more of your story out. And so I think it keeps expanding um, like why certain things have happened, but uh, I could just, I'll quickly, cause I don't want to go through craziness with childhood, but it started, I realized now I didn't know it until I started doing this TEDx thing, but the 13 year old me, I lived with my, uh, my mom and dad had gotten divorced. I lived with my mom and, uh, she was with, uh, her boyfriend at the time. And there was this moment I'm telling you this, this is my like first do the thing story defining moment. But, uh, she had basically had said that, uh, sorry, her boyfriend at the time was like hostile, you know, like it just was not good. We were not a safe environment. And I basically said, if you're going to stick around with this guy, I'm not gonna be able to stay with, I'm not going to be able to stay here anymore. And so she decided to stick around with him. Um, and then I moved out, I moved in with my dad. And so I don't know, that's the moment that I like have been revisiting just in this last year. I didn't really realize how important it was until, um, until I started kind of like doing all the stuff I'm doing now with the podcast and writing the TEDx thing and, uh, writing the book because, I was shy and I was very like inward, like people didn't even know I talked back then. So for me to make a decision like that was like a big deal. And then um, also it's the reason why I think I'm so prone to want to do what I do with my community and helping people build online communities is because um, because I never felt like I had a safe space uh, to connect with people. And so uh, it actually helps kind of like feed that <laughs> whole, you know, that I have from even back then. And so that's why my mission is really um, creating a safe space for people through connection. And so that's kind of like, I don't know, that's like the through line. There's a bunch of stuff we can go through in there, but I thought I'd at least start with <laughs> with that's where it comes from. Well, you, you know something, I, I'm, I'm glad you, you brought it up. I, I'm always when, when I do an interview, when, when I go back from the very beginning of their life and what triggered and what started people to be where they're at, I, I realized that some of the most successful people have overcome some stuff, some horrific stuff. Mm -hmm. You know, there are a large percent of the people that we buy their books and we we attend their seminars, whatever, have ended up homeless, abandoned, uh, uh, abused, sacrificed for, for the needs of some someone else. And all of a sudden, here they are today this blossoming rose. I've always said, if you take a handful of uh, uh, rose seeds and throw them in a, uh, an abandoned parking lot, one seed will germinate and find its way to grow. And that becomes people like Stacy Lawrence. So mm -hmm. when um, I, I, you know, another quote, happiness starts, um, does not, wait a minute, happiness is not where you start. They said happiness is where you finish. All progress starts by mm -hmm. telling the truth of your story. And I know you're writing a, a, a book and I know most of it, you have to peel back the, the, the layers of where you really are and where you really were at that time to get to where you are right, right now. And um, people don't know that we go through when we're, when we're asking people their why or what they want to do when they grow up or whatever the case may be, different seasons and different parts of your life discovers your why. And it's not until you get to understanding and do the thing is that you discover, discover your true purpose. So um, you you do a lot with coaching and mentoring and bringing people together. Why is it so important that we become a community instead of a solo act? Yeah, I mean, it's a great question. It's really goes, comes down to uh, so many people like have that mindset of hustle culture and having to like put your head down and get, get it done. Uh, 
But what it really does is it, number one, makes it harder for you to be able to like do the thing. And then it also uh, could kind of like lose the motivation, you know, and the action to get it done because you're not with other people that are doing it too. And so it's really important to, to surround yourself, not just with the community. I mean, if we're talking about specifically about your goals um, and reaching your goals, it's also important to be around people with shared goals because uh, that's how you're able to like see yourself in them and they can see themselves in you. And you're able to have these different conversations just even with us, right? I feel like immediately when we started talking, we're connecting because we have similar goals. We want to impact the world. We want to um, help people and, uh, you know, and we're wanting to activate our voice in a way that is fun and different. And so it's just an immediate understanding that we have. And so that's what I think is really important about a community is you're able to be with people that are, um, they get it, you know, they're, they're, they're not, um, thinking that you're, uh, out, <laughs> out there cause you're wanting to do some big thing. Uh, they're really part, you feel like you're part of something. Yes. Um, and it's nice to be part of something. I mean, one thing that we learned about COVID is that as human beings, we need to be connected to someone or to something. Um, being isolated and disconnected from things, we don't function well. Mm -hmm. So um, this leads to uh, another question because you do the dare challenge or whatever. And um, and I, I know last night you asked me a series of questions. Now I want to turn the table on you. <laughs> What's more important, love or happiness? It's so funny because, yeah, yesterday you said happiness. I don't know. I feel like love is more important. So what's more important? I mean, I think like with happiness, I feel like there is like a contrast, right? If you're not sad, then you don't know you're happy. So I feel like it is good to have both sadness and happiness because that's how you even know you're happy <laughs> and you're learning something. So I think love is more important because you have to love yourself first. We talked about that last night. And I love that we speak that language together. Um, if you don't love yourself, then you're going to be constantly trying to, you know, do something that you don't even know if you want to do. So that would be a long answer to your question, but I would say love is more important. I, I, I'm okay with long, long answers because I, I, I believe <laughs> Um, that love is important. Love has to be paramount because if you don't love yourself, how is it you're going to convince someone to love you? Mm -hmm. If you're not kind to yourself, how are you going to be kind? Have someone be kind to you when you don't understand what kindness mean, means? If you're not appreciated of the gifts that you have, how, do, how are you going to get someone to celebrate those gifts that you have? Now, one of the gifts that you have, I'm going to segue to that and do that thing, do the thing, Okay, feel free to correct me. This is my ADH kick, kicking in. <laughs> I get this all the time because I'm a person of color, um, melanated and black. However, someone wants to identify me or whatever, I identify as Kevin. Um, when I have conversations that speak to my community, um, I am sometimes not celebrated in the, in the fact of the conversation that we're having at, at hand. But women in business, I said this early on, and I, I am honest, women are thriving right now where men are struggling. I just attended a, a summit with Mary J. Blige, Taj, Taj um, P. Henson, and a bunch of other celebrities that were on there. And they were trying to bring the importance of having these conversations with women, bringing women together, having women uh, speak to the face and not behind um, the back of in individuals. Um, what is the mindset when you're community, uh, uh, creating a community? And I'm going to use two, two words that I think you're very familiar with. We're talking about um, the human connection with either having a fixed mindset and explain what that is to our audience or a growth mindset and explain that with an audience. And how that, does that uh, attach it, itself to the concept of your formula of do the thing? And does that conversation, I'm going to add this on there, is that concept or that mindset in absence of a man when you do the thing? Okay, so thank you. <laughs> so I, let me just make sure I understand the question. So with a fixed mindset, growth mindset, you're specifically wondering in terms of how I approach it with the community and then explaining what each one is. Oh, I love this. This especially, is so good. Especially directed towards women. Why is yeah. that important? Okay. Um, 
Okay, I'll do it first without the woman, just in general, and then I'll and then I'll add the woman in there. But the uh, with the community, uh, there's a lot of people that are like doing business and they're building things in a vacuum, you know, and which mm -hmm. I think is more of a fixed mindset because you're having this perceived kind of like vision of what people are going to want or what they're going to need. Um, and you're like building it before people are, are there. And so it's, it's really fixed because you have no idea what's going to happen when you put people, you know, like with something and what they're going to, what they're going to want. And so with a growth mindset, when you have a community and in my community or in any community that I help build, it's like, uh, you're able to actually like evolve and grow and move with what they want and what they're desiring but just by asking them, you know, like even before we did our interview, I already had an idea what I wanted to talk about with you, you know, but I asked a question in there asking them what they were struggling with, with dating and, you know, what they wanted help with mentioning our interview. And I immediately got the feedback. Right. And so that helped me kind of like adjust the questions for it. So to me, that's really a growth mindset because I could have a really closed mind fixed mind into what, um, I'm thinking people want, not ask for feedback. And so anyway, that's the way that I really help, uh, with my community and any community that I'm helping grow, because I want it to be about the people I'm bringing like business, like community back into business basically with, by having relationships and then where women come in, I think I need some help, like clarity in terms of well, well that. You, you've done over 200 and something odd mm -hmm. um, inter interviews, M mainly uh, women that are making a difference, that are forging ahead, that have started their own business, that they're sharing their, their, their secrets to success. I mean, when you look at it, the fact that it wasn't until the late part of the 60s um, that women had an opportunity to vote. It wasn't until um, the 80s when women were able to secure a business loan without the signature of their husband. Um, so a lot, a lot has changed, but then a lot has not changed with the fact that, you know, women do not have control, 100% control over their, their body and the decisions they make. And I'm not going to bring up politics and whatever, but we, we look at the fact that with opportunities that's presented to my daughters, my great great grand granddaughters and sisters, your friends, and so forth. Um, this mindset of being an entrepreneur and a female is thriving right now, mm. whereas the workforce with men are, are struggling. And so with do the thing and that growth mindset or that fixed mindset, why do you think that is changing and why women um, are so empowered right now? I think it's like, uh, I can only speak for my own experience where, uh, I'm 51 now. Right. So I've lived this like life <laughs> and have had experiences, got divorced, had to like go through that and have already like raised the kids, you know, I have 16 year old at home still, but like raised the kids, had the husband, like all that stuff, had the business. This was a brick and mortar business I owned, uh, for 20 years. And I think when that all ended, you know, and family broke apart and like all the stuff that happened, uh, I started to like come into, I didn't know who I was anymore. And this is so many women's story, you know, like after their divorce, they don't know who they are anymore. They just like lost themselves in this like marriage, husband, job, business, whatever, insert, whatever your thing is. And, uh, so I just went through that breakdown for a while and then sort of coming out of it, realized I needed to really find my own voice. And that came through my podcast. It was by like my 10th, 12th episode. I realized, um, even though I wanted to help people do the thing, I realized that was what I didn't do was, um, help. I never did the thing like for myself. I did it for like other people. And so, uh, it sort of got me to understand more about finding your voice. And that's one of my like flagstone challenges that I do. It's a find your voice challenge, helping people understand themselves. And I'm seeing it from a lot of, I mean, I do serve both when men, I serve everyone, but I have no specific thing, but in the singles group specifically, that is primarily women, but I'm seeing a lot of that where the women are like, kind of like, we're done. <laughs> we already did it for everyone else. We're ready to take on our own. And so I'm imagining that's where it's coming from. It's just like knowing that 
Um, we have this one life to live and we want to be able to find our own voice and then put it out there. I, I, I will say this and not many men will admit this. And I have groups of men, like you have groups of women mm -hmm. that, um, divorce is, is hard. Um, for men, we feel like we, we've failed our, our, our family. We failed in, in life. We've, we failed in whatever, whatever it was expected of us that, you know, we feel that the bar has been raised high. So it's not only women that go through this. The only difference between we have to go out and put on a good face. You guys surround yourself with people that are actually listening. Uh, uh, us guys, we don't we don't hear this, you know, woe is me or whatever the case may be. And um, we, we carry that load with, with us. Um, you have a formula for do the thing. Mm -hmm. Can you explain to us? I, wait, let me back up. Why a podcast called Do Your Thing? Do Your Thing. I mean, and the reason why I, I ask that is because people don't know that when you start a podcast, probably for the first X amount of episodes, you are just talking to a mic, trying to create a conversation. No one's listening. No one's heard of you. You, you go to a space and there's over 200, 2 million registered podcasters now. So when you start out for the first six months, when someone says, who's your audience? You, you, you have to be honest. Anyone that will be listening to me <laughs> until you find your audience. Why a podcast? What, what was your motivation starting a podcast? Yeah. So I was wanting to write uh, a book. I was actually originally going to write a sales book. And uh, I noticed with my, I owned a staffing company for 20 years. I noticed with that, uh, so many people wanted to make more money, but they weren't willing to do sales. And in my mind, sales is like the best job you could have if you are wanting to make more money because you could dictate how much you're worth. And uh, both then when I would say that, they would say, oh no, I can't do sales. So I was like wanting to show people um, why it was good to do sales and how to get overcome the fear and all about money growing on trees when you understand law of averages and rejection and all of that stuff. And then I have a mastermind I've been in for the last four or five years. And I was talking to them about the book and getting ideas. And then I also, in the same time, I was talking to them about my dating experience because at that time I was uh, dating and, or I had, I think I had met my boyfriend right around then, but it was like before then I was like, it's kind of like when I was dating, this is what I said. I'm like, it's like, you just meet enough people, you get rejected, you have a positive attitude, you set goals. And then I just want to like help people do the thing. <laughs> and that's what I said. And I listened to my recording from that mastermind, like explaining kind of like the parallel of sales and dating and how it's similar, not in a way of the way you present or in what you say, but in the kind of like the internal things that you're learning. Right. Um, and then that's where do the thing was born. And so then I had talked to a book strategist who wanted my do the thing struggle story and said, in order for me to write a good book, I needed to show when I didn't do the thing. And then when I did the thing and I was like, well, I've always done the thing. I like didn't, couldn't think of a time when I hadn't done it. Uh, and so like from the time I was in college, I went door to door and like went from Florida. I was going to school in Florida and then sold books in Michigan and Iowa and didn't even have a place to live. Like, so I've like always done the thing in that way. And so she was like, well, it's not going to be a good book <laughs> since you don't have a struggle story. You're going to need to interview people on their struggle story. And then when you get their struggle story, you could put that in the book. So that was what I was doing. I wasn't even starting a podcast. Really. I was just like going to start interviewing people. But then I said, okay, well, if I'm going to um, interview people, I might as well record it. And then who knows, maybe someday I would use it for a podcast. And so that's when I met um, Adam, who's the founder of my podcast platform. And uh, I signed up on his bot, you know, like on the website mm -hmm. and was like, oh, I want to record a, I want to record it from my phone. Cause at the time I didn't even want to do zoom. Cause remember in my mind, it still wasn't a podcast. I just wanted to record it. And uh, anyway, and that's when he like, literally like set up a time we talked and then that's where do the thing was born. And I literally, my first few episodes was like just on my phone. It wasn't anything. It was just a voice recording. And then what I didn't know, cause now I help people start podcasts. What I didn't know is that that like first recording, that's maybe like three minutes long. And that's me saying like, I don't even know why, like why this has been hard for me. Um, that, and it's like the sound is bad and it's in my car and I'm talking all about it, but that would be the episode that's helped hundreds of people start their own podcast now. Cause like you said, like you are, uh, you just don't even know what you're 
doing in the beginning. And so that episode helped people realize it's kind of like my, <laughs> me sucking helps people like yeah. open up to doing, you know, doing stuff. Cause it helped them see, Oh, it doesn't have to be long. It could just be three minutes. You just got to put it out there. And then it's the thing that's helped them all do that. <laughs> and so um, I, I will say this as especially for our, our listeners that are contemplating um, of doing a podcast, every last one of us, every last one of us starts out our podcast, not knowing what the hell we're doing. All right. <laughs> so when, when you say do the thing, write it down on a piece of paper and just do it. All right. Do that thing until that thing becomes the thing that you, you love uh, doing. So I am so glad that um, you did the thing. Mm -hmm. um, and from what I hear, you're in a thriving relationship right now. Mm -hmm. um, but if you go back and look at some of your um, podcasts, you have a lot of challenges based on relationships. Tell us how Do The Thing has transferred into um, uh, a lot of fun for a lot of people, a lot of great experiences bringing people together in relationship. Tell us about your challenges for Do That Thing challenges. Yeah. Um, and so I was, so was, was it during COVID? It was, yeah, I was, I got, okay. I had just interviewed uh, my holistic coach on my podcast and it was like a, a coaching session that I ended up putting on the podcast basically like, and the epiphany there was that I really miss the fulfillment that I had gotten from my staffing company and helping people get jobs um, and then helping companies remove bottlenecks by, um, you know, enhancing their team. And so I was missing fulfillment, right? So there was one piece. Then the next episode, I'm interviewing Alicia Reynoso, where she was telling me how she does these challenges. And that is how she has more impact and fulfillment. Because she's now, even though she had an e-commerce brand, she used the community as a way to um, connect people together through a challenge. And so I ended up reaching out to her, asking her information on like her challenge after and I didn't end up going with her. Like she had a, a service that she was providing. She gave me everything for free. She was like, oh, here, I'll tell you how I did it. She was amazing. And uh, at the time I didn't go with her because I still wouldn't do live videos. I was like nervous, you know, even though I would do my podcast, I still wasn't doing video. Everything was audio. I didn't want to do live video. And she was like, oh, in order for it to be worth the money, you should do live video. So anyway, I did that. And then, um, and then I, I think I even, oh, right. Then I mentioned um, I wanted to do a dating challenge. So I watched this show called Working Moms and they were doing dares on there. And one of the dares was like mooning someone. Another dare was like kissing a stranger. And I said, oh, that would be a really fun challenge. So anyway, that's what I did. That was my first challenge. I posted it in one of my groups that I'm in, the Peloton group that I'm in, like a singles over 40 group. And said, hey, I'm thinking about running this challenge. Who wants to do it with me? It has to do with dares. And like 100 people immediately joined my first challenge. It was kind of messy. I just sort of like did the thing, right? And I like my daughter was the one that like created all these dares. You know, I, as I had COVID, that's what the story is. I like had COVID while I was watching the show. And that's where the idea comes. So I'm like texting her like the images to create. She creates all the images. And then I did my first challenge. And so that's how the challenges start started since then. So I like to do dating dare challenge. It's kind of like my OG challenge. That's the only one I've repeated so far. Everything else I've been doing new challenges other than find your voice, which is a paid challenge. But like I've done a start a podcast. I've done a go live two hour cocktail party. Um, I feel like there was more. Oh, get fit. Uh, lots of things. Oh, bucket list challenge. Oh my gosh. That was a really good challenge. I uh, partnered with Laura Cardney. She wrote the book, my father's list. We did a bucket list challenge. And so, and then with all of those challenges, I integrate the do the thing formula um, through that, which is the formula is what kind of is the common kind of theme throughout everything that I do. It helps people actually like get past their own limitations and take action. That's why when we talk about coaching, I'm like, I don't consider myself a coach. It's just a, I'm like kind of like more of a CEO, right? It's a system that I'm integrating in each of these things. And then because I put the system in, the group kind of like takes on itself. So I'm not really a coach. I'm more of a implementation. I maybe CEO is the right word, but like, you know, like it's more of a system that goes in there and then that's how it's able to be done. <laughs> well, let, let's find out if you are a 
coach, a CEO, <laughs> or an implementation person of a system, explain to us the formula for do that thing. Yeah. So I'm game is an acronym and it came out of 80 episodes of my podcast. I was looking for common patterns for how people achieved success after going through a struggle. And you'll hear if you if you listen to the first 80 episodes, you'll actually hear me like dissecting it real time. And I say like, this is when you use this piece. So I had all these pieces of the formula that I was dissected things like goals, mindset, you know, all these different things that I was noticing were common with the people that I interviewed. And so at one point I put these patterns on index cards on my kitchen table. And then all of a sudden that's where the acronym I'm game came out. And each piece stands for a different, each letter stands for a different um, piece of the formula. So the I um, is identify your why, which you've talked about, right? And so identifying the why, but not just like your own why for why you're here. It's why for anything you want to do. So any goal you have, you want to identify why you're doing it. The M in I'm is mindset. And mindset, uh, the way I've tested it in my challenges, the the two big pieces for mindset that are most important are uh, what are your excuses and how will you overcome them? I love having people work through that process um, because when you're like brand new doing something, you're most excited about it. So you're going to have solutions for when excuses come up versus when you're in the moment of like exhaustion because you're doing something new. Um, you're going to forget, you know, like what what to do if something if 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 something isn't working the way you want. And so the the fact that they do it before they start, it like helps them when the challenge is happening. And so and then the second piece of mindset is fun because I always like to make things fun. As you notice, that's our common thing with our game stuff. And then with goal, uh, with a uh, game G is goal. And I do the goal as a dare. And then, um, where I give people dares to get them to take action. And it's not crazy dares. Typically they're just like a micro dare that I have them do. Um, and then like one of the dares will be to read your book. <laughs> That'll be a good example. And then another dare, probably a bonus dare would be for them to go on a date and use the cards. And so that's like an example of what I would do in there. And then the A is accountability. Um, and then the M is my people. My people is where you're with people that have a common goal, like a shared interest. And so for my groups, I'm doing that when I have a dating challenge, their shared goal is dating. Uh, and then the E is educate. And uh, educate has two parts to it. One is being ed like learning from other people like you, right? Or reading a book or podcast. And then the second part, which a lot of people miss and don't get, is the education by contribution. And so you're uh, just by you knowing something for two weeks, you already have like a lot more information than someone that hasn't done it yet. And there's also that feeling of fulfillment, back to fulfillment, um, that it, you get from being able to teach someone something you know. And so that's the formula that's kind of like worked through everything I do, the framework that gets people to actually like take action and make it happen. Well, you know something? I am, um, I'm just thinking, listening to the conversation we're having, I hope the people are, are, are listening versus the question I had and versus the statement you made that you said that you're not a mentor or a coach. So I'm looking at, and by, matter of fact, I actually am about to release a book, believe it or not, it's called um, Sales is the Best Job I've Ever Had, um, that I probably should hold off and maybe we should do it together. But I want to I want to see if I'm right, because when I normally speak and when I talk to corporations, or whatever, I talk about understanding the power of, of your words, words mm -hmm. either build or destroy. So I'm looking at the notes that I just made. I am your formula. This is your words. I am game identifying your why and finding out at each level of why you exist, why you do things and why things are happening to you and why the that um, leads into at some point your purpose. The mindset is having a mindset that's either fixed or growth mindset. What are you going to do? What, what is going to what what do I desire the most and what decisions I can make that brings me closer to where the G is in it? Goals. And then goals, when you set goals and whatever, you have to be accountable for the things that you say you want to do and so forth. And then you surround yourself with people that pour into you, not people that, that drain you. Those mm -hmm. are the people that you leave behind. And then the fact that in order for you not to repeat mistakes that other people have made, you surround yourself with people that pour into you. And that's called education. Or like you said, read a book. 
you know, for some reason, when I, I hear that you say that you're not a mentor or coach, mm -hmm. when you say do that thing, guess what? You're a mentor and a coach mm -hmm. and you don't even know it. Mm -hmm. <laughs> That's all right. Do that thing. Do your do mm -hmm. the thing. That is all right. What's more important, purpose or motivation? And what is motivation? Yeah, a purpose is 100% more important because you could be motivated to be doing uh, something that maybe isn't even your thing. It could be someone else's thing. And so it's really important to tap into why you're wanting to do something. And uh, and then as you move through it, it's uh, continually checking in with yourself to see how you feel. And then at some point, if you're feeling like stopping, I usually tell people to like at least finish the track of what you committed to, but then you don't have to stay with it forever. Um, but as far as motivation goes, uh, that's really, yeah, like you're, uh, you don't really need it <laughs> if you're, you know, if you're really deep into purpose, right? If you really feel like it's your calling and it's the thing that you were meant to do in the world. Uh, so motivation is sort of not as necessary when you're, when you're tapped into yourself, but in terms of uh, people that haven't like been able to flip that yet for you listening, uh, it, the way that I would say for motivation to really uh, be something that gets you to go after all the things that you want is to just take a little micro step because action is the thing that can help you stay motivated. It's momentum, right? It's being able to be in momentum for everything that you want. Yep. And life does reward action. Now, um, before we go, we co come to the, the closing part of it, I have a couple more questions. How do people get in touch with you? Yeah, thank you. So um, I have a, a couple communities I'll mention. It's uh, do the thing community.com. That's my like main challenge group. That's how you'll kind of see everything that I've got going. If you're a podcaster, entrepreneur, or somebody that wants to be in the space with other people and collaborate with people, then go to do the thing collaboration.com. All right. All right. So um, I am adding you, which I haven't told you. I have a list of 100 people that are um, are highly effective and sharing their secrets mm. um, to what makes life successful. I'm not talking about money and whatever, but there's a common thread. When I started my speaking uh, career, I started to evaluate and break down the same way you created the formula of um, conversations or emotions that every motivational speaker spoke on. And there were 23 different um, emotions that people talked about. And each speaker had at least four of those emotions in there. And I wanted to create something a little bit different for myself. So what I looked at is what I, I deemed to be successful. Uh, it's not my bank account that represents my success. It's my impact on the people that I surround myself with mm -hmm. and the conversation that happens when I leave the room. So I'm going to ask you to, one, share, share what dreams means to an entrepreneur and how you apply your, your dreams and your ambitious, ambitions to your dreams. Hmm. Yeah, I would say like, it's interesting. I have this weird way of uh, going after dreams is I don't, I can't, and I don't know what this is, but I don't really like know what I want until I'm moving, you know, and once I'm taking action, that's when I get to see it a little bit clearer. And then I'm like, oh, that's kind of funny. <laughs> that worked out like that. So uh, yeah, in my mind, just explaining dreams is like, not being afraid to move when you're feeling a whisper, you know, of something saying you should do something. Cause like, here's the thing for change to happen. And for you to really go after your dream, typically something's happened. It's either the feather, it's the brick or the semi truck, right? It's either some kind of whisper. It's something bigger than a whisper, or it's like your whole world has shooken, you know? And so I would just say, why wait for the semi truck <laughs> to happen and wait for the whisper. And so that's what I would say with dreams is like not waiting. I mean, that's my whole thing. Don't wait for opportunity. Create it is, is don't just wait for something bigger to happen for you to make the change. Just take the action now. And even if it's the smallest action, making a call, asking for help, you know, taking one little step um, to the thing you want to do. And then your dreams are going to come out for you. Uh, I say this a lot where uh, with, even with goals, 
a lot of people think you have to have these smart goals, like specific, measurable, and it's great for people that know exactly what they want. But if you but don't, if you don't, you could have a rough draft goal. You know, you can have an idea of what you want. I say the same thing with the dream is you don't have to exactly have a clear picture of what it is. You could just have a, like a feeling of what that is. And as long as you move in the direction that you want, you're going to, you're going to see what's going to open up for you. In the direction you want. I'm, I'm going to be that fly on the wall. I want to know the secrets to your success. I know you have a, you're, you're planning on doing a TEDx um, talk sometime soon. Um, when Stacy Lawrence speaks, what do you want people who are listening to your conversation to take away from your conversation you're having with your audience? What are the takeaways? Yeah, it's funny. <laughs> I, uh, this comes up a lot where I have, I do stand up comedy, just amateur, like so, so fun. But, uh, yeah, let it fly. We do everything. I have, on the show. no, no, I'm not going to do a funny thing, but I do have a sucking routine, uh, on YouTube if you want to check it out. But basically, it was my first stand up comedy thing. And I, uh, but it's something I've repeated since then. I just don't post it anymore. But it's about how terrible I am at things naturally and how hard it is for me to do anything. And so that's why I think I'm okay doing the thing because I, I like a lot of people, they're perfectionists, which to me, that would be exhausting because then you have to be good. You know, you have this pressure, right? Where I have, I have no pressure. I've like conditioned to flex the muscle on not being good. And I think that's what people in my community love about me is that I'm not this like polished you know, whatever person that you think someone needs to be to do stuff, right? I'm like, just like everyday person. And what helps people then take action is then they see that they can do it. And so it's that relatability, I think that helps people move in the direction that they want. And so that's what I want. I want them to take away is that they can do anything they want, you know, and don't think you have to be something that you that you have this perceived notion of what people are like, no matter who you meet, we're all the same. We all want the same things. You know, we all want love. We all want connection and we want to be happy. Right. And so it's just yeah. like taking away those superficial beliefs that we have to be something to do something. You know, something you, you know, if I were going up on the, on, on a mountain, um, 2000 years from now, and I was to bring back, um, two templates, uh, of messages, the one of the messages will that will be on one of the tablets will be do the thing, do the <laughs> thing. All right, uh, and I'm so glad you came on to do that thing, uh, do the thing with us um, today. I'm glad you shared your uh, experience. I was going to try to pull out a preview of your TEDx uh, speech. But um, I, I won't do that. I'll wait till after it happens, and we'll That's talk right. about that itself. But I do want you to write your book um, because I would like to um, read it, um, compare notes, have you come on and talk about that. And the other thing is, you know, part of the reason that I brought you um, on is because there are a lot of young women out there. And like I said, this is a woman's world, especially young women that are confused with uh, Instagram and so forth. And I want young women to see that they don't have to be dependent on um anyone or anything they could be independent and have a strong relationship and a strong life that you are an example of a woman taking control over their own life overcoming some stuff because you know we have to tell everyone to get to the point to where you're at and where i'm at that you have to go through some stuff and it does get easier it becomes harder before it becomes easier that's just life itself but when it becomes easier you do the thing and that's what i love i can't wait to get my shirt um, I have one, one more question to ask you. And I ask this at a 90% of the guests is on here. Now, let me preface it um, so you understand why I'm asking this. I did not know when I started my podcast having this question, you know, when people were trying to get me to, um, you know, get a lot of views and a lot of likes and everyone was trying to sell me something. It cost me um, $10,000 to learn what I knew going into it, that you had to grow your your family your business organically, one client at a time, one customer at a time, one like, one share. It all happens at one time. There's 8 billion people on the planet. And all I wanted to do is make an impression on 1% of those people. So it's a slow growth like bamboo. So when I, I say this circle of friends like you, 
Um, my friends are not the type of people that drive by an accident. They stop and help. Hmm. When I asked this question, I did not know that it was going to be received at the rate it was going to be, be received. I'm going into my third year, August 7, 2024. I've had five people that have been guests on my show that have answered this question and that strangers have come up and have answered the call to this question. Mm -hmm. So if I were to ask you, if you have one ask and it could be granted, if some stranger would ask you your one, one answer, your the call to your one ask. Now, some people go throughout their whole life and never have one dream come true. I've had five guests have their dream answered. So if I were to ask you, Stacey Lauren, do that, do the thing, podcast host, entrepreneur, soon to be TEDx um, speaker, good friend, um, champion of causes, not just for women, um, spiritual leader and don't know it, and just downright good person. If I was to ask you one ask, what would that ask be? ASK, and just in case people don't understand my Ohio um, um, term tune to that, I'm saying ASK. What would that mm -hmm. be? Okay, so I would say it would be to connect with someone that you don't know and tell them to do the thing. That's amazing. You know, it's, I've only had ever had one person on this show answer that question and ask for something for themselves. Um, this is the reason why you're going to be successful and that you are successful is because you are selfless and you're you're giving. You're always pouring into others. And I'm so glad that this show we're pouring into you because you deserve it. We have covered a lot of information. We've had some fun with a good friend of mine. And if some point in, in this interview, in this episode of talking with Kevin and son and the people you should know, if we have touched you in a way that changes not only the view, but changes something in your heart, um, because we believe in love and love starts from the heart. Um, I want to thank you. If you liked us that much, go to our YouTube page at RMK Productions and Network on YouTube and subscribe and ask. And if you like it that much, share it. And if you'd like to be a guest, and I'm going to say, uh, Stacy, you are always welcome. Anytime you want, there's always an open seat. We'll keep it warm for you. You can come back and you can go to www.rnkproductions.org or send us an email at info at rnkproductions.org if you'd like to be a guest or have someone you would like to recommend. I appreciate you 1,000 times over. My hashtag is find 1,000 reasons to be kind to someone. Mm -hmm. My grandfather always said, when you get to a point in life that you can help someone, it is your duty to do so. I am Kevin McLemore. I'm your show host. And like my grandfather said, reach one, teach one. And with that, with that said, we'll fade to black and we're out. Thank you, Stacey Lawrence, for being our guest today. Thank you. Thank you. Thanks for having me. No problem. <laughs>